welcome to this video on multiplying polynomials. By the end of this video, you should be able to multiply a monomial by a polynomial. You should be able to use the FOIL me method to multiply two binomials together. And you should be able to multiply a binomial times a trinomial. All right, the first topic we're going to talk about is multiplying a monomial times a polynomial. So this is the easiest one for multiplication. You're going to distribute the first term through the parenthesis that comes after it. One thing that you have to remember when you're working with multiplication is we have to learn something, remember something called the product rule. When we're multiplying like bases, what happens to their exponents? So if we had x to the a times x to the b, these, the base is the number attached or letter attached to the exponent. So the x is the base. They're exactly the same. What you do, so we have our like bases, so our base stays x, and our exponents would add together. Okay, so what would this look like in real life, not just in a mathematical definition? So what if I had x to the second times x to the third? Their bases are the same, so the base remains what it is, and we're going to add their exponents. So your final answer would be x to the fifth, okay? So when we were adding and subtracting our polynomials, we did not change the exponents, but when you multiply them, you do have to use this product rule. So let's try a couple of these, see how they work for us. This says we're going to take the monomial and distribute it to the polynomial. Sometimes you'll see this with the first term written in a parenthesis also, but usually not. So what this says is it's a x next to a parenthesis. That means multiply it to everything inside the parenthesis. So I have x times x. They're both x to the first, so that's going to give me x squared because 1 plus 1 is 2. Then I'm going to say x times a positive 4. That gives me a positive 4x. So the monomial has gone to both things inside the parentheses. From here, we just want to make sure there's no like terms to combine. We have a squared and a two to the first, so they're not like, and it's in standard form. That's going to be our final answer on that. All right, let's try another one. Our monomial is 5m to the third. I want to distribute it to this trinomial that comes after it. So we're going to go just to the first term right now. So you have 5 times 3. For 15, I have m to the third and m to the second. 3 plus 2 is 5. That means I have 5 total m's. All right, let's go back and do it again. 5 times, well, what is that number right there? That's really a negative 1. So 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. I have m to the third and m to the first. That means there's a total of 4 m's. All right, and go back and take it to the third term. I have 5 times negative 7, which is negative 35. I have m to the third, and there is nothing for it to multiply through out here. So we're just going to bring down the m to the third. Check to see any, if anything combines and for standard form. Um, I have an m to the fifth, m to the fourth, m to the third. Those are not like terms. We can't combine them and they're in standard form because it's largest to smallest. So that is our answer. All right, let's try number three. You have 9a times a. So remember the a's technically have a one on them, so that means there's two total a's, so we'll say 9a squared. And then you have 9a times one. Well, anything times one is itself plus 9a. These are not like terms. You cannot combine them, and they're in standard form because there's two exponents and then one exponent. So that is your final answer. Our fourth example of a monomial into a polynomial. 3c to the fifth is our monomial. We're going to send it through to the first term in the parenthesis. So we have 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. c to the fifth times c to the first that means there's six C's total. Five plus one is six, right? We've taken it to the first term, go back and take it to the second term. Three times negative five is negative 15. C to the fifth, and there's no more C's out here, so it's gonna stay 
c to the fifth. These are not like terms. We cannot combine them, and they're in standard form because the biggest exponent comes first and then the next sized exponent. So we are finished with the monomial and two of polynomial. The next one we're going to do, this gets used a lot in all of math. This is a binomial times a binomial. So to multiply binomials, each term from the first binomial must be distributed to each term in the second binomial. Uh, then you'll combine like terms. The order in which we do this is called FOIL. Okay, so FOIL, F means first, because that means first term to first term. A and C are the first terms, so you would multiply them together. Next it says outside. That means outside terms. A is the outside of the parentheses and D is the outside, so it would be A times D. The inside terms are the two terms right side by side in the middle here. Multiply them together. And then the last term, B is the last term in the first binomial, and D is the last term in the second binomial, so you're going to multiply those together. From there, you would look for um, like terms and write in standard form. So let's give it a try and see how we do. So I recommend always going in the same order. It just makes it easier. We have first term to first term. That's our F from FOIL. X times X gives you X squared. Then we have our outer terms. X is the outer term on the first binomial. 4 is the outer term on the second binomial. So that's my O. X times 4 is 4X. Then we have our inner terms. That is 2 times X, which gives us 2X. And then our last terms in each binomial is 2 times 4, which is plus 8. All right, from here, check to see if they, we have any like terms. X squared is the only x squared, so I'm going to bring them down. Then I have a 4x and I have a 2x that are like terms. 4x plus 2x is 6x. Remember, when you're adding, you don't change your exponents. And then on the end, I have this constant. I didn't have anybody to combine to, so he's going to come on down. This is our final answer. We have two exponents, one exponent, no exponent. We are in standard form. Okay, let's try it again. We have y times y. That gives you y squared because we're multiplying, we change exponents. y times 1 is just y, or if you feel better, you can put a 1 in front of it. That's okay. Then we have our inner terms. 8 times y is 8y. And then we have 8 times 1, which is plus 8 check for like terms. y squared is the only squared term in there, so it's going to stay. Then I have a 1y and an 8y that when I combine them, I get 9y. And then I have a constant on the end of 8. doesn't combine with anything else, so I will just bring it down. Look at my standard form. I have squared to the first, no exponent, it's in standard form. That is your final answer. All right, let's try some more of these. Number three. So we have 2x plus 1 times x minus 5. So you're going to start off with 2x times x, which gives us 2x squared. Then you have 2x times negative 5, which gives us negative 10x. We have 1 times x, which gives us a positive 1x. And then I have 1 times negative 5, which makes that a negative 5. Check for like terms. This squared term has nobody to combine with. So I have 2x squared. I have negative 10x plus 1x makes this a negative 9x. And I have my constant on the end of negative 5. Doesn't combine with anybody. I'll just bring them down. Two exponents, one exponent, no exponent. It's in standard form. That's our final answer. All right, let's try number four. Notice we do the same process every time. FOIL, first term to first term, then outer term to outer term inner term to inner term, last term to last term. It's just easy if we follow the same process every time. So we have x times x for x squared. We have x times negative 2 
that gives us negative 2x. We have positive 2 times x, which gives us positive 2x. And I have positive 2 times negative 2, which gives me negative 4. All right, look for like terms. x squared is the only squared term. It's going to come down. I have a negative 2 and a positive 2. Well, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. If we have 0 of something, we are not even going to write it. These guys canceled out. They're just gone. The negative 4 has no one to combine with. It's just going to come down. So this looks different than what we've had going on because there's no middle term, single x term, because they were opposites of each other and they canceled. So that does happen sometimes, okay? All right, and these last two. This is one, one of the number one mistakes that happens all the time in Algebra 1, and I want to be real sure that we get this, okay? When this says x plus 4 squared, you are not allowed to distribute the square through and say x squared plus 4 squared. It's against the math rules because what this says is all of x plus 4 needs to be multiplied to all of x plus 4. It's a shortcut way of saying this math sentence. Okay, so we have to, I recommend writing it out and then we'll start our same process first to first. So we got x times x gives us x squared. We have x times 4 or plus 4x. We have 4 times x, or plus 4x. And we have 4 times 4, or plus 16. Check for like terms. x squared is the only squared term. 4x plus 4x is plus 8x. And our 16 has nobody to combine with, so he's just going to come on down. Two exponents, one exponent, no exponent. We are done with that problem. All right, one last one of binomial times binomial. Notice it's set up the same way as number five. You are not allowed, it's against the rules, to distribute that two through. It's really saying all of p minus seven has to multiply to p minus seven. Then we'll follow our process. p times p is p squared. p times negative seven is negative seven p. Negative seven times p is negative 7p, and negative 7 times negative 7 is a positive 49. Check for like terms. p squared is the only one like it, and I have negative 7p and negative 7p, or negative 14p. I have a positive 49 that has nobody to combine with, so it just comes down exactly the same. Two exponents, one exponent, no exponent, and you are done with that problem.